I'm Rishi Sanyal with DP Review, and I'm here today with um, Sony's Kenta Hanjo. And Kenta, do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, your role at Sony? Sure, yeah. Um, I'm the product manager for uh, Sony for ILC cameras, so that all the alpha cameras, all the lenses, and also um, Cybershot, including RX. So okay, awesome. Uh, cool, I'm a lot on of... the still di digital imaging side. Okay. Yeah. That's so a lot of exciting products. It is, yeah. On. It's been really, really crazy recently. Um, lots of momentum, lots of exciting news from yeah. us. So it's been really fun. It's exciting yeah. for us too, as uh, as photographers, to right. see what Sony's doing. Um, a lot of new, innovative stuff. So right. hopefully, we'll cover um, some of that today. Yeah. And okay. Looks like you've got the. I A7S. do have the A7S Mark II. Nice. Uh, it's the first time we're showing it in the U.S. Uh, in a public um, um, expo. So uh -huh. if you're in the Seattle area, please come by and check it out. Yeah, we're, uh, we're here at PIX 2015 in yep. Seattle, two days, October 6th and 7th. Um, so if you're in the area, please come by and check it out. There's a lot of um, cool stuff here that you'll be able to see. A lot of manufacturers, a lot of toys, a lot of photographers, uh, talks and everything. So um, yeah, so thanks for joining us, yeah, Kenta. Sure. I appreciate right. you Thank being you. here. One thing I'd love to know is, you know, being in charge of such awesome products yeah. and, and a lot of them, um, what, do you like, what do you find is the coolest thing about your job? It's definitely pushing the boundaries of what we know and like really expanding the photographic and the videographic world. I think that's the most exciting part. Um, we get to see kind of the future in terms of all the new sensor developments that we're doing, uh, all the new lenses that we're coming out, and uh, obviously all the new bodies that we're coming out. And right. it's just we're because we're not you know um, we are the, the underdog you know honestly. Right. But that mean, that's a, a, a good uh, place for us because we can challenge the market. We can change the market the way we see fit. And uh, we're able to come out with daring new experiments. And I think um, with that, uh, people are starting to experience different ways to photograph or video, uh, take video. Right. So that, that part of changing kind of the, the world in, in the sense of uh, how you approach cameras, how you use these cameras is, mm -hmm. I think, the most exciting part of it. Yeah, uh, we interviewed Maki-san right, right uh, recently, and he made a, a very similar point, which is that um, being the underdog kind of forces you to yeah. it's forces an, you to yeah, it's right? an advantage, really. Yeah. Uh, so does that? Do you feel that that makes Sony more nimble because you have? I mean, maybe you you have less to to worry about in terms of cannibalization, which which other companies might have. Is that well, part of it, or is that? Um, we're not afraid of cannibalization. Um, I know some people will say, oh my god, don't say that, don't say that. But, uh, you know, it is a necessary uh, risk that we take uh, when we want to be uh, innovators. Right. Um, but an advantage that we also have is that we create our own sensors, uh -huh. right? We create our own lenses, we create our own processors too. So, we, because we have those basic ingredients, we can really um, create the cameras that we just think of. Yeah. So we, you're somewhat vertically integrated in a sense. Right. That, right. In, in that sense. Cool. So we're definitely open to ideas. You know, we're always looking at the forums. We're always listening to customer voices. You know, to try and reinvent the camera. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, it's, it's pretty clear that um, you're listening to customers' voices just recently. Right. By your uh, announcement for the uncompressed raw, right, right. so that was that was wonderful. That was is that something that you, uh, the Sony had been kind of thinking of for a while and seeing what the customer demand would be, or yeah. is it something that was always on the books? Um, so it's it actually started with the, the DP review interview with Maxan that you guys okay. did, yeah. and uh, uh, we understood that there was a you know a concern about compressed raw, uh -huh. and uh, Maxan did uh, say and follow through with his uh, promise. So we're really happy to do that. And it just doesn't stop there, you know. Uh, we're constantly listening. We're, we can't do everything that uh, everybody wants. Right. And um, what we like to say is that there's no perfect camera. Yeah. There's always gonna be something that sure. people are gonna complain about. And we understand that, but we're gonna do our best to make it the best possible camera. Yeah, you know? no, it was very impressive to yeah. see the, um, the response um, to the uncompressed raw. Right. And then a bunch of other things too recently that we've been seeing um, being enhanced in the camera that are really important to photographers, like your auto ISO improvements and right. and, and autofocus. So um, it's great, great to see. Cool. Yeah. So speaking of uh, listening to your customers mm -hmm. and, the, and, and photographers' needs, could you tell us a little more about the um, recent launch of because you you got Sony Artisans right. right, and recently you launched uh, the Alpha Universe right. site right, and could you tell me a little more about what that is and it. And if that's an effort on Sony's part to connect with photographers, right. 
So we're all about innovation, but it's also important that we're making cameras, so we need to support the art community as, right. as well. And uh, Sony Alpha Universe is kind of the catch-all name for what we're do doing in the social and the, um, the arts community. Okay. So now we have close to 50 artisans now, and if you want to check them out, you can check them out on our uh, website at sony.com slash alpha, okay. or you can go at www.alphauniverse.com. Um, you can check out check out everybody's um, profile there. We also have very inspiring stories that we put up, and also an Instagram feed and a, a, a Twitter feed as well. Okay. So, so yeah, lots of cool news and stories are aggregated there, all about Alpha. And, okay. uh, we definitely want to support the, the, the community. And our artisans, do you have artisans kind of across all types of photography? Right. Um, yeah. Like landscape, all sorts sports, of, and all? Correct, correct. So okay. landscape, sports, um, portrait, mm -hmm. videographers. Um, we also have Christina Minnemeyer, who's going right. to be She's talking be today. Yeah. Um, she's a conservationist um, right. um, biologist, but also goes out to really extreme areas like the, uh, the Antarctic and uh, really oh. yeah, okay. shoots in very cold weather. So. Uh -huh. Very inspiring story, very inspiring pictures as well. So, And do you, um, are artisans also photographers, do you get feedback from oh, yeah, for your cameras? Yes. So we're constantly yeah. sending them surveys uh -huh. um, and then you know, letting them know, you know, what they want to be fixed. Okay. And uh, again, we can't do everything that they right. say, uh, yeah. but I think we do a really good job um, making every iteration better and better. So. Cool. Yeah. Um, what, what kind of photography do you like to do, Kenta? Do you... so, I started out in video, uh -huh. then once, since I started working for Sony, I did a lot of photos, uh, stills. Okay. Uh, but now, I'm, recently, I've been going back into video. Cool. Video is so much tough, I mean, you know, yeah. a lot tougher, but, um, oh, yeah. but these cameras now, yeah. that could do both. Right. It's such a game-changing um, idea, right? Yeah. So you could be shooting stills, but also uh, shoot uh, video on the side as well. Yeah, so. I, d I did the same when I was, um, as you know, I was recently on my honeymoon in Iceland, right. and uh, it's just so, you have to stop by the road every five right. minutes, yeah. and every now and then it's just nice to be able to switch it into video and know yeah. that I was getting uh, great video. Um, so it's it's really interesting to see the, the convergence of the two, because yeah. um, it just means that, uh, that you don't have to make the choice. Uh, right. well, like, at a given moment, you have to make the choice if you're going to do video or stills, but yeah. it's nice that you don't have to have a separate device right. on you. And a lot of the things that are important for stills end up being important for video and vice right. versa, especially, for example, autofocus. And, and like you just said, it's really, video is very difficult. I mean, is, yeah. I've shot some short films and it is a huge production team. Yeah. But one thing I find great about these cameras is that they're lowering the energy barrier for certain aspects of video that used to be very difficult, like, right. like focus and, right. and follow focus and um, all the exposure and all these sorts of things. Yeah. So they're literally making it a little easier to shoot video, yeah. um, which I think is going to bring more creatives exactly. out. And, right. and not just creatives, it's going to make more people um, willing to try, yeah. right? Ultimately, that's what Sony is really after. Mm -hmm. it's, we're not trying to take away share from other companies. We're not really interested in that. What we're really interested in is in expanding and ex making the customers of the site. Right. And right now people are starting to get um, comfortable just shooting video on smartphones. Yeah. That's okay for some, you know, uh, some stuff, but mm -hmm. when you want to be creative and these tools become so much more accessible and lower that uh, entry, right? right? So uh, what we want to do is expand that market yeah. and uh, get more people really interested in videography and cool. uh, photography as well. So. so while we're on the subject of video and some of the uh, capabilities of these cameras that make it easier, um, a lot of the focus technologies put into these cameras, especially the A7R2, um, with on-sensor phase detection, uh, really helps with video too. So is there, um, are you guys making massive efforts to try and make autofocus and video something easier and, and more accessible? Sure, yeah. Um, I can't t talk about the details about okay. future product planning, but uh, that's some, uh, definitely something in the road, yeah, in the you, roadmap, yeah. Do you think that, I mean, a lot of professional videographers will say, you know, they'll swear by manual focus because right. they need absolute control. Yeah. But do you see a day where autofocus and the interaction with the camera to tell the camera what to focus on will be so good that even professional filmmakers will be relying on autofocus? Um, a word I try not to use is it's impossible or it's never going to happen because I think eventually it will happen. No, if it's um, our, our, we make a lot of videos at DP Review and our crew uh, recently switched to the A7S. Oh, cool. and every shot we look out of it in 4K is just amazing. So excellent. It's, excellent choice. It's yeah. very nice. Yeah. Um, and I think they're, they'd be very excited about the, um, the image stabilization in the newer bodies because right, right. it just comes 
comes built in. Um, so even with image stabilized lenses, like mm -hmm. Sony OSS lenses, yeah. are you going to get better image stabilization with the Sony OSS lens on, on an IBIS body like the A7S II compared to the A7S? It's a good question. Um, it depends on lens. Yeah. Uh, so for example, the 7200, that's going to use um, the, the elements inside the, the lens mm -hmm. with the, the image stabilization, but it's not necessarily going to make it better. It's going to be about the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And in that case, the lens element is used for, is that for the pitch and yaw, Correct, yaw right, corrections? Right, yeah. And then the rest is handled by? X, Y, and... Uh, um, uh, in the body, Yeah, right? shift. Uh, rotation, yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Cool. Um, you know, with these, with these guys, um, you have a number of different sensors going yeah. to these different bodies. Um, what is the, what's the production cycle and development like for a sensor in one of these cameras? Is it like yeah. years out? Does it de-iterate every right. couple of years? Yes. Um, so can't say anything confidential, but yeah. um, uh, typically sensors are much longer. Lenses are much, much longer. But what Makisan said in that interview, which uh, it has become very, very famous online, is that we're going to try and, uh, and come out with products every six months. Right. Right. Yeah, I've heard that. So yeah. there's a lot of teams working um, constantly, you know, night and day, right. uh, trying to uh, come up with a new product that's going to excite the customer. So yeah, that's a that's a great attitude and very yeah. ambitious. Things. Right. Right. It is ambitious um, because typically, if you look at other manufacturers, you know, one to two years is uh, pretty normal. For yeah. this industry, so oh yeah, I mean, they're, they're very usually very iterative updates, right, right. Um, whereas we see big, big changes. Yeah, that's um, one thing about Sony. Uh, that I think you hit on a good point is that we're not interested um, because our primary focus is to excite. Mm -hmm. To and the Japanese word is kando. Okay. Um, because we want to excite, we're not interested in iterative um, uh, successions. So yeah. we don't want to make this a little bit better. We want it to make it ten times better. Yeah. You know, that's the spirit behind Sony cameras. Yeah, that's it's wonderful for us to deeply review right, to see, right, but yeah. also as photographers, yeah. it's wonderful to see because um, it really puts pressure on a lot of other brands. And, and you know, we at DP Review see a lot, yeah. a lot of cameras and technologies. Right. And frankly, you know, the small iterative updates kind of get a little boring. Yeah. Um, and when we see a new product from Sony, it, it, there's there's so much interesting stuff to, to test right. and talk about that it's um, it's very exciting right. and it's great to see things moving um, that fast because uh, honestly it, it's even better for all the other shooters out there because uh, of other brands because it's putting pressure on their brands right. to innovate as well, Correct. which in yeah, the end yeah. is great for the consumer. Yeah, so. all votes lift up, right? Yeah, so. just just yeah, exactly. Raise the bar. Yeah. Um, so, let's talk a little bit about the A7R2, okay. um, which I'm, I'm honestly a, a big fan of for the type of photography I do, um, because its autofocus technologies yeah. and dynamic range, everything are, are really impressive. Yeah. Um, so, what were going into the A7R2? What were some of the priorities at Sony? So that sensor was created uh, so that. There was, we knew that convergence is a real thing, right? So you have photo and video both being very important. So mm -hmm. one of the things that we concentrated was the correct sensor. And what that meant was high sensitivity, mm -hmm. high resolution, but also very good 4K video, right. especially in the APS-C uh, Super 35 mode. Okay. So if you want really good Super 35 4K video, mm -hmm. you, uh, a little bit of oversampling is a good thing. Yeah. Right? So what we do in the, the 42 megapixel image sensor is a little bit of oversampling to make it make the, the file so much more sharper. For the, the Super 35? Right, okay. correct. So from there, we can calculate what's necessary for a full frame sensor, which, it, which becomes 42.4 megapixels. Oh, I see. Right. So we didn't try uh, to become the number one resolution camera. What we uh, really aimed for was picture quality, especially right. the 4K video aspect. Yeah. So, but, but those three things, um, and we introduced uh, the backsided illuminated right. structure mm -hmm. because we also wanted sensitivity, right. not just resolution. Yeah. So with those three ingredients, sensitivity, um, resolution, and also yeah. the 4K video, mm -hmm. that's where you get yeah. the all-around camera. That's incredible. Yeah. So you know, we test noise pretty rigorously, and we found 
that the A7R2, when viewed with the same magnification, the same viewing sizes, is as good right. in terms of low light ability as the A7S, yeah. which is, it's amazing to not have to make that choice right. uh, between resolution and, and low light. You're yeah. just getting the best of all worlds there. I think it's very interesting that the A7R2, you decided to, you just went around and changed so much um, and brought so much new in that camera, yeah. especially with the nearly 400 phase detect AF yeah. points. Um, when you decided to do this, this uh, on-sensor phase detection, make it that expansive, it's more expansive than any DSLR, right. full-frame DSLR out there. Um, when you decided to make it so expansive and, and 400 of them or 399 of them, um, what was the, you know, what was the rationale behind that? Did you, was it specifically for video or was it for stills? And, and were, was Sony kind of just like, we're going to throw as much at this as we can um, to get to, to make that autofocus leap so far ahead, or what was the rationale? Kind of? So the phase detection is definitely for more for stills. Yeah. Um, we, you know, if you con continue to use contrast detection AF, mm -hmm. you're always going to get that little bit of hunting right. uh, all the time. It's not going to be per perfect, right, uh -huh. compared to a regular DSLR, which has a dedicated phase detection right. AF yeah. sensor. So, but we wanted to get close to that, uh, close and sometimes even better in, the, in terms of experience with uh, uh, using sensor-based um, mm -hmm. autofocus uh, algorithm. Mm -hmm. So that was one, uh, one step forward into, I guess, the future yeah. of how we think sensor technology is going to evolve. So you're kind of, right? you know, you're kind of being the change that you want to right. see happen in exactly. this case, right? So is, um, I know it's difficult to have phase detect elements work um, Far out from the image center, right. so the you know the um, the span we see on the A7R2. Do you know if that's about as far out we're we're ever going to get technology-wise in terms of phase detection? Well, you never know. You know, technology yeah. always improves. So currently, uh, that is one of the limiting factors. Yeah. Um, but you, I, I I just don't know. Maybe BSI becomes even better, so it can get corner to corner coverage. Cool. Maybe the optics might get yeah. better. So. You just never know. Yeah, yeah. yeah true. Um, historically, I think mankind has been really bad at predicting. Right. Uh, right. We always underestimate yes. what's going to happen in the future. So, um, you know, one of the things that comes with the A7R2's autofocus system is something that's very hard to communicate to a lot of photographers, and, and, re and we know it's difficult to communicate even to our readers, um, which is that this notion that this mirrorless AF can in some ways be even better than DSLRs. Right. Um, and, and it frankly can in, in two, two aspects, um, to my understanding. One is in terms of accuracy, precision. Um, in other words, DSLRs always have um, this problem with potentially missing even when you use the right AF point because of inherent tolerances of the phase detect system. And secondly, um, the fact that the mirrorless camera is always seeing the scene means it can do intelligent analysis in the scene and intelligent autofocus because it can do, like it can recognize Kenta and right. just focus on you. You can, um, so, so that image analysis can help AF. Do you, do you find it difficult to communicate some of these advantages to photographers? And, and what are you doing to try to make, these are somewhat technical, but they, they're technical, but they also really do matter to photographers. Right. Um, right. Because focus is still an unsolved problem to yeah. a lot of um, photographers. How, how are you communicating that? And is that is that a difficulty you're facing with such, yeah. uh, like bringing people along with these huge technological advances? Right, it, it's always a challenge. Um, uh, but I think your uh, readership understands the technology really well. Mm -hmm. But um, through activities like um, Sony Alpha Universe, right. uh, the events that we do, coming to these shows, mm -hmm. exam for example, yeah. these are where we really want to disseminate all this information right. and you know use this because. And you're right, you know, the AF technology has become so advanced, mm -hmm. you can now not only do face detection, but prioritize faces. So the yeah. camera will remember yeah. which, um, which faces to prioritize. Exactly. So it, um, if you had a niece or an aunt that you wanted to, you know, or your daughter or son, yeah. you know, you can prioritize their face, yeah. make the camera remember it, yeah. and in a group, prioritize only their face. Right. So one of the things that, um, uh, that I love using now is IAF, yep. uh, which you just brought up. And now that it's available in continuous mode, right. it, it totally changes things because what I can do is, um, when I, I shoot weddings and engagements, and in those scenarios I may not have pre-programmed in someone's face, right? But I might have a composition where I have two or three people in the frame and um, I'm a huge fan of wide-angle portraiture and so you can do fun compositions where you have like, um, a bride and a groom here and someone else over here, but in those scenarios you want to pick 
the person you want to focus on on the fly. Right. And rather than with a DSLR, I'd have to sit and just use the AF point and manually move it over um, to the person I want to focus on, which, which doesn't even work if the person's moving, right? Um, what's amazing about IAF is I can have the camera in continuous focus, I can have the camera um, in just one of the AF area modes, like center or flexible right. point. And let's just say I have it on the center focus point mode, but I'm in AF continuous and I hit IAF. I first just place the person I want the camera to focus on in the center. Right. I hold down IAF and while keeping IAF held down, I just recompose. Yep. And even after recomposing or if the person moves or anything happens, the camera just remembers that person that I initiated focus right. on. So that sort of subject tracking is incredibly powerful right. um, because as long as I have the AF button held down, even if I'm taking one, two, multiple shots, the camera will always remember that person right. uh, and continuously focus on them. It's almost like we were, earlier we were talking about how some of the technologies for video and stills are really converging and help one another. This is one of those areas where I think Instead of this idea of, of photographers composing a shot, then focusing it, then taking the shot, it's almost like having the camera always focused on your subject, like you're shooting video, so the camera's always ready for that moment, so that at the decisive moment when you take the shot, your camera's already been focused because it's been continuously focusing on your subject. That's correct. And I think that's a really exciting thing that, that, that these cameras bring because yeah. They're always doing image analysis. Right. It used to be that IAF was a nice to have, but now yeah. a lot of our artisans are now using it for their work too. So yeah. it's a very practical, very usable feature now. So yeah, we're excited about it. Too. We did. I actually, for DP Review, we ended up doing a huge shoot out of the Canon 5DS right. and the Nikon D810 and the A7R2 for newborn photography, which yeah, yeah. moved really erratically. And we haven't published that yet, but I can, okay. I can share with you right now that um, even the best autofocus tracking system on a DSLR that we'd had before, which was in the Nikon D810. Um, it's, it's great, but the hit rate with the A7R2 is so unprecedented, simply because you don't even have to pre, you don't have to tell the camera what to focus on. Right. You can just have your shot composed and just hit IF, and it'll automatically find the nearest eye yeah. and keep it continuously in focus. And for erratically moving subjects, there's nothing yeah. like that. Right. Like, that's just incredible. So speaking of autofocus on these guys, um, I know the autofocus is a complex thing and it's different for different types of photography, but do you think that um, we're close to seeing mirrorless holistically catch up with DSLRs in terms of AF? And, and what do you think the last remaining hurdles in terms of AF are right, right. compared to DSLRs? So in most situations, I think we've come to a point where um, uh, face detection on uh, on sensor, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's on the A7R Mark II, not on the A7S Mark II, but um, right has succeeded in most situations, um, especially in low light. Yeah. And low light AF is really, really good. And we have a demo here as well at PIX cool. uh, nice. kind of demonstrating that. Yes. And it's available to um, um, uh, autofocus in uh, light as low as negative 4 EV, right? Yeah. Right, right. right. using the contrast detection right. yeah. sensor. Yeah. So as we've been talking about, um, there are a number of AF features on this camera, on the A7R2 mm -hmm. anyway that actually make it exceed DSLR um, AF performance in terms of accuracy and intelligent right. um, subject tracking. Um, but, you know, is there, are there still some areas where there's some catching up to do? Because we, you know, we've tried it out in sports scenarios and yeah. though the technology itself is, is incredibly capable, um, our sports photographer found that there are some areas where there can still be some improvement yep. um, for sports photography. Um, although to be fair, I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that it's an EVF and yeah. it's difficult to follow action. Right. But um, yeah, are you guys prioritizing these cameras working in sports scenarios? Is that a market yeah. you're gonna take on? Yeah, so there's always room for improvement. And uh, when it comes to sports, it's a, you know, it's a very uh, exciting area to get into too. So we definitely uh, worked a lot in the portrait area, the video area. You know, sports is definitely uh, one area that we want to focus in okay. as well. Um, it's a little bit tough though because it's a combination of different areas that we need to improve on. So not just AF, but we also need to come out with the right lenses for sports, right? right. The EVF does need to improve. So there's um, you know zero to almost very perceptible minimal uh, uh, perception of lag as right. well. So yeah. there's a lot of areas within the camera that we need to improve for really the pro sports photographer to accept it. I yeah. Think. So but. But there are, you know, at, at this moment, you know, Gene Lower, uh, for example, on the NFL sidelines, being able to shoot using these cameras, um, NFL um, um, football. So cool. there are people out there that can yeah. do it because uh, 
they understand the camera and they can work it. Yeah. But um, but yeah, obviously there's always room for improvement. So a lot, you're right. We, you brought up a good point, which is a lot of this is actually understanding the camera and understanding how to take advantage right. of it because with so much new stuff. Um, it's like you almost have to find new ways to work with the camera right. or, or it behooves you to in order to take advantage of the technologies. Right. Um, so my understanding also, you brought up shutter lag and the perception of, of, of shutter lag and, and, and the EVF for sports because it's difficult to follow subjects with the EVF blacking out. Um, so our understanding is, based off of some measurements that um, Dave Etchells did, is that the shutter lag itself is actually very minimal. So a lot, I think a lot of the perception of the delay and lag is actually simply the EVF blacking out. Right. So is that something you think will be solved in the future? It's, totally, yeah. Okay. Uh, just how we're making better and better sensors, mm -hmm. we can make better and better displays yeah. that um, black out less and less. And you can definitely see an improvement over uh, the generations of our cameras as well. So. Yeah, with it, when it comes to A7R Mark II, A7S Mark II, I, I really don't see any problem with the, the lag. But yeah. there are people who are when very, I, very... Yeah. Uh, when I take a single shot, I don't, I don't yeah. notice the lag right. at all. In fact, I, I did my own test and it, it really takes a shot quickly. But the, the, tr the tricky part is with an EVF blacking out following the action. Right, right. Um, in fact, that's probably right now that's still an advantage to OBFs, optical, Correct, optical yeah. viewfinders. Do you see any other advantages to optical viewfinders that uh, EVFs will have to overcome? Let's see. Um, I'll give you a positive about okay. EVF first. Um, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, obviously because it's electronic and yeah. it's reading off the sensor. Yeah. You're always seeing what you're exactly exposing what your for. Exactly. Yeah. Be, right? And yeah. most people they they understand it, but once you start using it in the real world, uh -huh. I think you'll start to see the benefit of it. Yeah. You're never chimping like this. You're right. not shooting and then yeah. and checking if you got the exposure correct. Yeah. You can see it through the viewfinder and change it change it on the fly. Yeah. Once you get used to EVFs, you cannot go back to OVFs. Yeah, it's That's difficult. my personal yeah. experience. So, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a little funny. A lot of people say, they like to say that there's a disc, they think that there's a disconnect when shooting with these cameras, with EVFs and mirrorless, um, that it doesn't feel like a camera as much to them. Yeah. Um, I keep reading that and it, it sort of bugs me a little because I'm, I'm thinking, like, what is the reasoning for their, their feeling this way? Yeah. Um, because in many ways, I find these cameras to be even more camera-like than DSLRs because they take care of things like focus for me yeah. for, for the candid portraiture that right. I do. Um, and I feel like one of the things that is actually the fact that with a DSLR, when you're looking through the OVF, you see the scene as you see it and your yeah. eyes see right. it. You click the button and then there's a moment of discovery mm -hmm. when you look at the LCD right, right, right. to see if that photo matches what you thought or is it better mm -hmm. or is it worse. Or, there's a moment of discovery, but yeah. with mirrorless cameras, there isn't a moment of discovery because you're always seeing it. Yeah. And I feel like, I wonder if that's, that's the reason. It, yeah. yeah, so. I've heard that before too. It's like yeah. there's an essence of magic. Yeah, when <laughs> so, you, like film, like yeah, when you used it, to go and pick it up yeah. later and, and that's been taken away with right. these. But you know, but there's so many good things that come with exactly. the technology. And you, if you're on the job yeah. and you, you got to get that moment, you yeah. can't be you yeah, can't you be know, checking your exposure. Yeah. You, you, you got to get the, it right. Yeah. Yeah. You're not thinking about the moment of discovery. You just need it to yeah. work. Right. Um, right. So, but I think that um, no. I, speaking of like preview exposure and EVF, it's you're absolutely right. Like using zebras and right. things to see your highlights, you can immediately tell what you need to do. Um, Sony also has these really great dynamic range compensation modes. So when you're right. dealing with high contrast scenes. In an optical viewfinder, I can see the whole scene. But with EVF, sometimes there's too much dynamic range for the scene, but you have these dynamic range optimizers and S-Log2 to kind of balance out the scene so I can see it. Right. Um, so that's that's these advantages. Uh, these advances are making EVFs right. really great. Um, I'm going to ask ask you this again, and you know I've asked you this before, okay. but you know, uh, in terms of raw, I shoot raw. A lot of us pros shoot raw. Um, we're still waiting for exposure tools that help us figure out how to expose RAWs optimally. In other words, when, do, when does a RAW actually blow out? Mm -hmm. um, because right now we're getting a JPEG preview, which may be far off from what the RAW file is. So um, you know, is that something we can see in the future, is, is histograms and, and highlight warnings based off of RAW? Okay. I think All a lot right. of us would appreciate that. Uh, we'll definitely take that as homework item, and cool. uh, we'll try to see. Yeah. Thanks, I appreciate yeah. that. Um, so just a, it's a couple more general general questions, sure. and we'll um, we'll wrap up. Um, what do you think is the next major technical technological breakthrough for um, for consumer digital imaging? Right. Is there one thing that you can kind of single out? That's a tough question. I, yeah. 
you know, there's so I, many, right? We're, we're, we're so bad at predicting the future, you know, but uh -huh. I, I think it's going to come down to the core essence, you know, the core building blocks. So it's going to come, innovation is going to come from the lens, mm -hmm. the, the sensor and the processor. Yeah. So, you know, and we're developing all those all in house those. and we're always trying to make innovation through yeah. there. So uh, what you can do is with, when you have all those ingredients, it doesn't have to be an interchangeable lens camera, right? Right. It could be any kind of form factor. Yeah. So, you know, um, I think we're open to that, to that of kind of yeah, yeah. innovation. Yeah. Yeah, and you're still committed to a lot of lenses, right? Right. Um, for the FE series, because that's yeah. something that people still want to see, right. especially yeah. with these amazing bodies. Um, one thing I'd, I'd I'd like to ask you is um, is about A mount. Mm -hmm. So, um, is Sony still committed to A mount and uh, A-mount lenses actually work pretty well on the even on the A7R2 right. with an adapter, um, but there's still some autofocus modes that are locked right. out. Um, are you is Sony interested in in almost having a seamless native-like experience with A-mount lenses on the A7R2? I'm really glad you brought that up because I I want, I, I want to reassure all A-mount users we are we are not quitting A-mount. We okay. are still going to develop. Um, and A7R Mark II, A7S, you know, they can use A-mount lenses yeah. you know, via the adapters. But that's, we introduced that just because um, we wanted to give more options. Okay. Not make this an E-mount camera per se. So, okay. so, you know, obviously FE lenses, native lenses work best, you know, and then some A-mount lenses work really, really well yeah. with the cameras, but we understand that not all of them are gonna work as, as good as native lenses. So. Yeah, I think one of the limitations we found was that five FPS continuous shooting okay. if doesn't work. Right, right, with continuous, lenses. yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, there there are some limitations using A mount lenses, and we understand that. Yeah. Uh, we understand the frustration when mm -hmm. it comes to that, yeah. and that's the reason why we need to still create A mount lenses, A mount cameras. A mount cameras, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. right? So Sony has an interesting, um, almost dilemma here, which is that since this A seven R two works so well with adapted lenses, including third party lenses, right. which was somewhat unprecedented because no one had done that up right. until now. Um, you can get continuous AF, fast, accurate, with even Canon lenses um, and possibly Nikon lenses in the future. Sony's in an interesting position because that makes a lot of photographers excited about the A7R2 being a truly hybrid camera, um, where in the future you can select any lens based off of the lens and pair it with any body. Um, now, is that is that something Sony is is interested in, in pursuing more, this, this kind of angle as a hybrid camera? Because I know there's a, there's a dilemma here because Obviously, Sony makes amazing lenses, and I'm sure yeah. Sony wants to send, sell Sony lenses. You know, um, having options is really great, yeah. right? But um, as Sony, as the company, I think the best best match is what you'll find is with FE lenses. So okay. we definitely recommend using FE lenses, but yeah. we're not going to stop you if you want to use third-party lenses. And I think uh, the tinkers out there, you know, making um, you know adapters and stuff, they're going to make that technology be even better and better. So I think we'll see a lot. Of you know, improvement in yeah. terms of usability using third-party lenses. So, um, before we wrap up here, um, I wanted to just ask you one final question, and that's that Sony posted very strong financials right. this year, um, partly backed uh, largely by sensor sales. Mm -hmm. And as we know, many, many devices in the world have Sony sensors, right. including iPhones and Nikon cameras, mm -hmm. and I know you're probably not allowed to talk about that, but my question is, um, given that you sell these sensors to, to other devices, how do you maintain a competitive advantage uh, for your own cameras? Because right. a lot of the new technologies going into sensors, you know, um, I take it we first see it in Sony cameras, but is there a sort of give and take, in a sense, with selling these sensors to, to other camera manufacturers versus, versus putting them in your own cameras? Right. It's a, it's a difficult question, and uh, it's a difficult balance within Sony as well. But um, what we want to do, ultimately, is be the number one imaging leader. Right. Mm -hmm. We want to push innovation, whether it's selling sensors to other manufacturers or creating our own cameras, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think by developing even better and better sensors, yeah. we're going to achieve that anyway. Yeah. So I, I think sense. ultimately, you know, be a it's, win -win a, for it's a win-win, right? Uh, it's a delicate balance, you know, and it's something done way above my pay grade. So, <laughs> so uh, cool. I don't need to worry about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, before you go, because you have the A7S II in your hand, um, do you want to maybe tell our audience just a couple of quick, because there's not much, too much to know about this camera yet, just a couple of quick takeaways that people sure, yeah. should know about the A7S II if they're, if they're A7S owners or, or newcomers to the system. Right, so uh, it's the second generation um, A7S Mark II. Uh, now it does 4K internal recording, also adds image stabilization. 
you do have an improved EVF as well, um, and just uh, overall a really great camera. And a lot of people think this is a, a video camera, you know, uh, um, and used only for video. But I highly, highly suggest that you try shooting stills too, because 12 megapixels does offer you enough resolution for most day day to day shooting. So, with the combination of silent shooting, there's just so many ways you can, and the ISO sensitivity, you know, the the night portraits uh, yeah, are just really, really, really amazing. So. Does this have like continuous IAF as well, just minus the phase detection? Correct, correct, yeah. Everything yeah. So no, uh, no um, uh, phase detection, but contract, it's all based on contract detection AF. But that's, and that's allowing you to um, uh, autofocus in low light as negative 4 EV. So it's just an amazing camera, uh, one, of a, one of a kind. When it, if I remember correctly, there's some improvements to the contrast detection algorithm to right, work right. better with low contrast subjects. Is yeah. that right? So it's about 30% faster, especially in video. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, a really great camera, especially in low light. So. Okay. Cool. And does the um, is there any um, there were there were complaints or rumors of overheating with the A7R2 in terms of 4K? Um, personally, I actually shot it for like 30 minutes straight and it was fine. Yeah. Um, but is that also a concern here, or is that not? It, it really depends on the shooting environment. Okay. So if you're in the Saharan desert, you know, and like heat just coming on, yeah. there there may be a chance with that it overheats, but okay. in most situations I've shot it in, yeah. it doesn't overheat as well. So it really depends on the situation. And if you're worried about overheating, is it better to record externally? Uh, it, it does help, it does help, yeah. And also pulling this LCD off as well, okay. definitely helps as well, so. Okay. So yeah. Well, but um, solid camera. It's yeah, no, the entire line is. So yeah. it's, it's it's great to see. All right. Um, can we expect to see phase detection in, in all your cameras moving forward, or is that? I hope you, so, but yeah, I, I can't tell. Can't talk about <laughs> it. Okay. Well, okay. I think we've covered a lot right, today, great. so I really appreciate you joining us. Thank you very and, much. Uh, all right. Thank you for being here, and um, it's great to see you as always. Thank you. All right. Talk to you later.